Richard, the King-class locomotive, is proud of his Great Western heritage. He works hard and always completes his tasks on time. Unlike his brother, King Henry VIII, who had been outright rude to the others, Richard was much kinder and well liked by all. One morning, Richard and Nemo were talking at Sheffield. Makes me glad to see so many people visiting the line. Having Truro and Scotsman work together on the Silver Rose and breaking that record, well, it's definitely put us on the map. Indeed. Now, if only we could live up to that, at least a small amount. Ah, don't bother, mate. If we start trying to live up to what they've done, the Woodard line will be a disaster. He is right, you know. Mr Phillipson had been listening to the two engines and decided to join the conversation, much to their surprise. Oh, Mr Phillipson, I didn't see you there. You and the boss have a bad habit of sneaking up at us, you know. My apologies. Anyway, I wouldn't recommend trying to hit 100, Richard. Even Silverlink doesn't go that fast. Agreed. Oh, and Nemo? I'm sorry to hear about your friend. I would have said something sooner, but you know how it is on the railway. Business gets in the way. It's alright, sir. Thanks anyway. Speaking of pasts, we haven't heard your story, Richard. Oh, you don't want to hear most of it. It's mostly the proud Great Western engines thinking they're better than the rest. Oh, don't get me wrong, there are some like myself who were smart enough to realise we weren't as high and mighty as we were led to believe. Perhaps, when you're not busy, we could all hear about it? Very well, sir. Later that day, Richard, Nemo and Mr Phillipson joined a few other engines at the shed. William, Edwin, Dave and Stephen were also keen to hear Richard's story. Alright then, now, let me think. <coughs> So, our story begins in 1948. Not many engines like nationalisation to start with, and the old rivalries were still strong. Back at my old shed, the engines all said the same thing. The LMS were grimy, the LNR were a bunch of bonobies, and the Southern were just rubbish. It was also the time when the exchange trials began, and I was sent to the Eastern region in exchange for one of the new peppercorns. At first, I really didn't want to go, but there is this one occasion that made me change forever. I arrived at York Sheds one January morning. There, I noticed a little J50 preparing a train on a siding. He smiled warmly when he noticed me. Hello, hello. You must be the exchange engine. Oh, morning. Yeah, that's me, unfortunately. What a long face. I was only being friendly. Ha, huh. friendly. There's no such thing as a friendly northeastern engine. There are loads of friendly northeastern engines. You just need to find one. That'll be the day. Can you please tell me where my train is so I can get out of this dump? Sure. It's right over there. Platform 2. Thanks. Soon I was out and about, thundering up the East Coast main line. This was, after all, what I was built for. Soon, I reached Darlington, and there, I noticed a Gresley A3, still painting in the old apple green livery. Just look good and stay quiet, maybe it won't notice you. Hello there. There goes my plan. Hello! What brings you to these parts? That's never seen a western engine this far north. Exchange trials, I believe you've heard of them. Ah yes, I know about the exchange trials. I... I was sent in exchange for Pendennis Castle, so once upon a time... Good chap. Yes, well, I'm pretty sure that J50 at York would love to hear all about it, but I need to get going. Okay, Mr. Great Western. They never change, do they? I carried on through Durham towards Newcastle. I had to admit the weather was bitter. Freezing winds slashed against me as I approached the city. After I pulled up in Newcastle, the station pilot rolled up alongside me. Oh there, man. I can't see a scene view, buddy, eh? Yeah? I beg your pardon? Oh, we. Come with us, cock. Streak will take the turn over the bar, you know? I couldn't make out a word he was saying. But it turned out that an A4 was going to take my train up to Edinburgh, and I was to stay in Newcastle for the night.
At the yard, the various other engines chatted long into the night, and I remained silent. I was cold and alone in this strange place. I was still awake at midnight when the pilot joined me again. You need one? Certainly not. It's cold and windy and I can't make out what anyone's saying. I wish I was back west. At least we have proper weather down there. How way westy. Sure the weather up here isn't exactly bonny-like, but I'm used to it, you know. Out west I'd be roasting up, I reckon. The pilot had a point, and it was then I realised. Here I was, a big strapping express engine freezing my wheels off, when this little engine didn't even seem fussed about the cold. I thought to myself, the big four companies were all different, granted, but none was better than the other. We're all unique, different engines for different jobs on different lines. It's what made us special. Now the Nationalisation Act made sense to me, to embrace our differences and come forward together. Me and the pilot continued talking into the early morning, and when I left Newcastle, I felt like a different engine. Although the weather was still cold, I didn't mind so much. I finally opened my eyes to all the wonderful scenery around these parts and began to enjoy myself. At York, I saw the A3 and the J50 chatting away. Morning, lads! Morning? I, er, um, want to apologise for yesterday. I was very rude. You know, it's not such a bad place, the Northeast. I could actually grow to like it here. <laughs> Don't worry about it, mate. It'll be nice to have you around. Thank you, my good engine, and I must say that I enjoyed my time on the Great Western as well, quite thoroughly. Well, I stayed on the line for a few more weeks, and sure enough, I did grow to like it. Northeastern engines made me feel very welcome, so much so that I was pretty sad to leave. When I got back west, most of the engines thought I'd gone soft, but they never spent a cold night in Newcastle. Well, how about that? Great story, Richard. So, how does it feel to be back up north again? Glad to be back, although it's still freezing. The engines all laughed and chatted away into the night. Some rivalries never die, and while it is good to be proud of your origins, this world wouldn't be as interesting as it is if we were all the same. If a great western engine could realise that, then anyone can. <laughs>